I'm Andre Mannard. I'm uh, 62 years old, owner of the Magiro Gym. I'm a kickbox teacher. I started with Taekwondo, there was also uh, full contact uh, uh, guys that did full contact, but that was in the long shorts. And uh, I, want to be, uh, I want, to, want to grow further, so I go from my little village, I go to Amsterdam to look at all the gyms, and then uh, I ended here in the Giro Gym. That was in 1981, 1980, something like that. And Andre, how long did you compete for? Compete? I did my first, yeah first I did Taekwondo. And then I did some boxing fights. And then in 1984 I did my first uh, Muay Thai fight here in Amsterdam. Um, almost immediately the same time coaching because I, uh, I teach at a gym in uh, Krummeni, my, uh, my place of birth. And, and Andre, growing up, you know, was there a lot of kickboxing on TV? No, not at all. And you know, let's talk a little bit about Majiro. Can you tell me the history of Majiro? Majiro Gym is uh, founded in 1975. And we're here in the Lauri Gracht since 1978. And Jan Plas was my teacher. He uh, he's the founder of this place. And he was in uh, Japan for a kung fu kind of style. But they weren't let in. They, they they closed the doors for them. And then they saw a poster of kickboxing, and they see also Fujiwara. And Mr. Kurosaki, the teacher of Fujiwara, was already been here in the Netherlands in the 60s for karate. So they meet each other. Uh, that's the way it starts. Yeah. And this is the original location? Yeah. No, no. It, not if, they start first somewhere else, but I don't know the location where it was. It was in a boxing gym. And then in 19, 1978, they start here. And this yeah. was one of the first, if not the first, kickboxing gym in the Netherlands? I think together with, yeah, together with uh, uh, Chakuriki. I think Chakuriki was a slightly little bit earlier. And, and you guys have created a lot of champions. Who are yes. some of the who are some of the more notable champions? Rokaman, Fred Royers. He was already the karate champ. Then he became also kickboxing champ. Andre Brilleman. And even now, I mean, your, your son's a champion. Isn't yes, it? yes, that's great. Yes, that's a great story. So, so when you first started, what was the combat martial arts scene like in the Netherlands? Small, but uh, very fanatic. And, uh, and, and willing to uh, organize because then uh, uh, the fighting starts in all in the Netherlands also, all, every time the same towns because we're the same gyms but uh, yeah, it was nice, everybody knows each other and, and when you first started was there a big connection between karate and kickboxing? Well, karate, taekwondo, penjak silat, all those uh, martial arts that we did before we combined of course and then also uh, the original Thai fighting because people go to Bangkok and Thailand to learn their the original Thai style. But even in Thailand you have different styles of course. So, so Andre, when you first started training at Majuro, walk me through, what was a normal training day like? Well, I start with, uh, with the starters. So I come here early, I have to hurry from, uh, from home, from Kromani, race with my car here because I have a normal job, I'm a gardener. I come here and uh, I remember I always uh, put my shoes out in front of the door because my shoes were always dirty from my work. And then uh, five o'clock or something like that we start and that's how I start and then when you're good enough they go you go an, an hour later, hour later. And then on a certain moment I was allowed to, fire, to train with a, with, a, with a fighters group and that was uh, exciting. exciting. And, and Andre, can, can you walk me through your experience? If you remember your, your first fight, what was that like? Yes, my first fight was in 1984. Yeah, 84. It was in the McCounty. And it was a guy against a guy named uh, Hiller. He was a big guy. And uh, yeah, for me, it was a great day. I come in my, uh, my shoot, my Majiva shoot. I take the train, I go to the McCounty, the Hoekstein. And there I had my fight, three rounds, and I win on points. Yeah, I was very happy. And Andre, thinking back on your experiences with fighting, what, what's your proudest moment that you always think back that makes you smile as a fighter? My proudest moment was my fight against Luc Verheyen. Five rounds, three minutes. I had a few uh, setbacks, I win, I lose, and I had two, two, two losses in a row, I think. 
And I think, yeah, I, I cannot win this one. I have to, uh, I have to quit. But then I fight Luke Verheyen, and Luke Verheyen win of some guys that I lost of. So I think if I win of him, I'm back on track, and I win after five rounds, points. But I knocked him down with a nice high kick, right high kick. And you know, transitioning to your time as a coach, what was your proudest moment as a coach? As a coach, uh, my victories with Peter Hart, Remy Bujanski of course, because he was a student of me from the start. Peter was already champion when he came to me. But Remy, I built up here in the, the, in the gym, and uh, he became also K1 champion. And later on, of course, the, the title of my son. And, and you know, a lot of times, you know, people say the, the hardest coaches are the ones that are their dad. Do you think that was true? Do you think you were harder on your son? Uh, you have to ask my daughter and my son, because my, my daughter is a very good fighter also. She did a few, few beautiful fights also uh, in Italy. She did a great uh, fight. And I think, no, I'm not harder. I think I'm okay. I'm, uh, I'm doing okay with it. And, you know, for you, you know, you were both fighting and coaching at the same time, but what do you think was the, the hardest transition from being a fighter to a coach? That, that because uh, when you see your boys doing not good, you want to jump in the ring, and to, <laughs> but that's, that's not possible. That's a thing that, that conflicts. And, you know, you, you've pretty much seen kickboxing grow in Amsterdam. What do you think has changed the most? Yeah, that is a good question that I always... In the old days, they say, I have a fight for you. Oh, where, when? And not every, every fighter, of course, but now it's also, and how much? I mean, what kept you on this path? That this is my life. This is, uh, this is my thing. And also it's my, uh, the, the, the legacy of Jan Plus, of course, that I, Majiro Jim is uh, many champions, and I, I, I want to stay here. Yeah. And I hope for a long time. And, you know, even though Dutch kickboxing and Muay Thai have different lineages, there's many similarities, right? What, what do you think are the biggest differences between the two? The kickboxing is, is more uh, combinations with hands, feet, and uh, of course no knees, but uh, in the original kickboxing. Now they adjust also the knees, uh, the glory rules. And the Muay Thai, uh, the real Muay Thai is a little bit slower. First of two, two rounds, it's a more looking and feeling. And then the last rounds, they go. And of course, the, the fact that the gambling is a big force there. It inflicts the, the way of the, the fighting goes. Okay, so this is all the old posters from the old times, but also one with the new times. When my son won the K1 uh, Heavyweight Championship. And, uh, Jean Claude uh, Terrio. Yeah. Or oh, Paris, that was in Paris. And world titles, ISKA, WACO and WKA. Three of the big uh, organizations. We just, uh, last year we changed all this. But the dojo is still the same. Like, uh, we are since 1978 here. Or 87. 78. <laughs> <laughs> And there's also a lot of history. This is Jan Plas with Rokama and Kurosaki with Fujiwara. And all this is history and some new things. And that's of course the logo, Jiro Jin. Fujiwara again. This is in the 70s. This is Mr. Kurosaki. He was one of the first uh, fighters that go to Thailand from Japan. And uh, they all can beat, and that's why they uh, make a style that can beat the Thai fighters. This is a big champion also, Mr. Fujiwara, Toshi Fujiwara, still alive, he's doing good, he's enjoying life. And, you know, how would you like to see Dutch kickboxing continue to grow and evolve? Well, I think we are on a good path now. We are uh, recognized by the government. There is, uh, yeah, there are good uh, education now for the trainers. It's a totally different world now. And I hope to, that it continues on like that. And Andre, if, if you have someone watching this online and they've never done you know, kickboxing and they want to do it but they're afraid, what, what would you say to them? Yeah, they have to make the step. Uh, you have to dare and, and, and inform good to which gym you go. In your opinion, what's the most important thing for your students to learn from you? Well, I think the, the fighting spirit, of course, never give up, keep going on. 
to behave yourself on the street. And my last question for you, Andre, is what's going to be your legacy, you know, like 50, 100 years from now when they think of Andre? I think nobody knows me then. But uh, of course, that in the scene, the kickboxing scene, I hope that uh, they know me for uh, my uh, never give up style and that I uh, spread uh, the Majiro Gym style around the world. I'm Andre Manat. I'm happy that you uh, listened to my story about the history of Majiro Gym. And uh, who's...